Mixed Martial Arts has become a go-to location for athletes with failed football careers, but none were more controversial than former defensive end Greg Hardy. Today, we look at Hardy's ill-fated run in the octagon, a tenure marred by scandal, undeserved showcases, and proof natural ability isn't enough in even the weakest weight class. Welcome to the INC, and this is the MMA career of Greg Hardy. When Greg Hardy signed for the UFC in 2018, he did so as one of its most hated fighters. For five years, Hardy had been a fixture of the Carolina Panthers NFL team. Drafted in the sixth round of the 2010 draft, Hardy would make 75 appearances during his time in Charlotte, helping his team to two playoff appearances and one of the longest winning streaks in NFL League history. Hardy's most successful season came in 2013, recording a team record 15 sacks and a place in the NFL Pro Bowl. All right, I don't know anything about American football, but that sounds good at least. Hardy's goodwill, however, ended in 2014 when he was arrested for domestic violence charges after assaulting his ex-girlfriend, leading to a two-month prison sentence and his subsequent release from the Panthers. An attempt to revive his career with the Dallas Cowboys fell through after Hardy was arrested for possessing cocaine. And amid reports of being a bad locker room influence, Hardy's time in the Big D was cut short. After being effectively blacklisted from the NFL, any sports promoter would be wise to stay clear of Hardy's toxic brand. Unfortunately, UFC President Dana White wasn't one of them. If you make a mistake, your life isn't over for, for you know, yep. go kill yourself or something, you know what I mean? It's like, you made a mistake, you pay for it. When you make mistakes, it's all about how you act from there on out. How do you handle yourself, uh, you know, after that, and, 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 and what do you do to fix it? Hardy had long been a fan of MMA dating back to his teens, and following his release began training at the Jackson Wink Camp in Albuquerque, where his size and natural physicality left many feeling the defensive end could find success in the sport. After three first-round wins as an amateur, Hardy won his pro debut against Austin Lane on Dana White's Contender Series, where a battle of NFL washouts ended in brutal fashion. Oh! Hardy, and that is it! Hardy claimed a second Contender Series win a few months later, while a third triumph on the regional scene saw the UFC take a chance on the 30-year-old. Hardy was signed to an initial four-fight contract with his UFC debut scheduled for early 2019. Hardy's signing caused uproar with both MMA fans and the wider public, with many feeling the UFC were setting a bad example in giving the athlete a second chance. Others, meanwhile, pointed out Dana White's double standards, choosing to sign and retain fighters with domestic violence charges while speaking out against those in other sports. Most notably, his comments regarding Baltimore star Ray Rice after his own abuse charge in 2014. Hardy made his debut at Fight Night Brooklyn against Alan Crowder, a 13-fight veteran looking for his first UFC win. Hardy started the fight strong by swarming Crowder with big overhands, only for the Carolinian to survive the onslaught and take Hardy down in the middle of the round, exposing many of the ground issues that would plague Hardy in the later years of his career. With his cardio sapped and Crowder building confidence, Hardy was forced into desperate measures to change the fight's momentum. It was there where the fighters in experience came to the foray. Oh! And immediately the referee intervenes. That is an illegal knee. Hardy's knee rendered Crowder unable to continue, granting Hardy his first loss by disqualification and a tongue lashing from Dan Margliotta. The fight did little to change the ill will towards Hardy going into the bout, and making the UFC realize they needed a lower threshold if they wanted to make the Hardy experiment work. They got their answer three months later, when Hardy took on Dmitry Smolyakov at Fight Night Orlando. Smolyakov's booking was a strange one. The 38-year-old had failed during his first UFC run in 2017 and had only fought once since his last Octagon appearance. Many believed the Russian had been signed as a sacrificial lamb for Hardy, and those fears were realized as Smolyakov threw zero strikes before folding at the first sign of resistance. Hardy was off the mark in the UFC, while Smolyakov was released a few days later. Hardy would fight three more times in 2019, beating Juan Adams at Fight Night San Antonio and a short notice match with Alexander Volkov in Moscow, where Hardy surprised many by going the distance with the former Bellator champion. Despite this, controversy continued to follow Hardy through his career, with his latest scandal coming against Ben Sassoli at Fight Night Boston. 
Hardy was content to pepper Sassoli through the first two rounds, but appeared to noticeably slow by the end of the second. Hardy knew he needed a second win if he wished to beat his Australian opponent. <laughs> Literally. Is that medical? Is it medical coach? Yes. Yeah. You saw the proof. Second down, let's go. Let's go, kid. Hardy held on for a unanimous decision, but the inhaler stunt didn't escape Boston State Athletic Commission, who overturned the win to a no contest. Hardy claimed he'd been given permission to use the inhaler by a nearby inspector, but his appeal was quashed as it had not been pre-approved before use. Hardy planned to maintain an active schedule for 2020, but the COVID-19 pandemic put a wrench in the fighter's plans. Hardy, however, would be a part of the UFC's return to action, taking on unbeaten Jorgen de Castro on the main card of UFC 249. Hardy survived his opponent's trademark low kicks before claiming a tepid decision win. Hardy followed the triumph with a win over John Jones, training partner Maurice Green. But by this point, resentment against the fighter had crescendoed. Many fans had grown tired of Hardy's perceived preferential treatment, often appearing on main cards despite fan hostility and an increasingly cautious fighting style. Others noted the poor quality of Hardy's opponents, with all of his wins coming against fighters released by the promotion shortly after Hardy's victory. It left the UFC with their backs against the wall. Hardy was going to have to fight better competition whether he or the UFC deemed him ready. In December 2020, Hardy was paired against Polish veteran Marcin Tabura, often used as a litmus test for heavyweight prospects. Hardy hammered Tabura with power shots during a one-sided opening round, only for Tabura to hold on and land a takedown in the later stages of the second. It was there the Hardy mystique began to crumble, with the fighter seemingly clueless on the ground as Tabura finished the fight with ground and pound. Hardy's first meaningful jump in competition ended in embarrassing fashion. Hardy had no fears of being taken down for his next fight, as he took on fan favorite Tai Tuivasa at UFC 264. The fight would be Hardy's biggest showcase yet, a main card slot on one of the biggest pay-per-views of all time against a fighter known for his all-action style. With both men possessing huge first-round power, fans were unanimous in believing the fight wouldn't go the distance. What followed was one of the most karmic moments in MMA history. Hardy was finished by Tuivasa just over a minute into the first round. Hardy suffering the indignity of being knocked out by a man walking out to the Spice Girls. A second straight humbling did little to help Hardy standing among UFC brass although the fighter himself wasn't letting the pressure show. As we always talk about, man, my, top, my clock is a little bit different than everybody else's. Pretty much everybody wants me to lose. Big losses, for me, are a little more detrimental, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I feel like I do need to win, but at the same time, my inhaler took me out one fight, my lack of knowledge of the rules took me out another fight, you know what I mean? These aren't fights that I, I'm actually losing, so if, as long as I keep going in my development, to me, man, these losses are very, very, very small. By the time Hardy returned at UFC 272, the company had seemingly made up their minds. Many considered Sergei Spiva a stylistic nightmare for the fighter, and those pundits were vindicated as Spiva took Hardy down immediately before finishing the match with ground and pound. It would be Hardy's last fight in the UFC, the company choosing not to renew the 34-year-old's contract and ending the experiment at 7 wins, 5 losses, and 1 no contest. In the years after, Hardy turned his attention to boxing, hoping the lack of that darn fangled grappling would see him flourish in combat circles. While Hardy showed signs of promise with a win over Hasim Rahman Jr., things quickly went south once the gloves came off. Oh! On the cow right hand! Down goes Greg Hardy flat on his back! It's easy to see why the UFC thought the Greg Hardy experiment would succeed. The fighter boasted youth and natural physicality in a division desperately lacking in both, and his early performances showed some shoots of potential. The truth, however, was Hardy would never have won fans over even if he'd been a success, the toxicity of his brand clouding any achievement the fighter may have had. Hardy's tenure proved natural ability on its own isn't enough to be successful in MMA. Was it worth the UFC dragging its name through the mud to do so? We'll let you decide. This is the INC. Please like, share, and subscribe. And tell us what you think in the comments and ring that bell so you never miss another video.